Today we are going to be showing you some features of DSS Pro version 8. Unlike last time whenever we showed you the abilities and the concepts of what it could do, today I'm actually going to show you in the making of the software doing its job. Now of course for my DSS Pro version 8 I've added access control, thermal imaging, tripwire intrusion, video metadata, face recognition and AMPR. I have put as many features as I can into my own DSS Pro version 8. It seems to be very feature rich and it is so so easy to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the laptop up here, I'm going to set up a device to record a screen so then that, what, that way I will narrate what I'm doing and just take a look at these features. As you will see this is the interface to DSS Pro version 8. And of course you can see that through these big sliders here they've been separated evenly and of course we can actually see clearly exactly what we need to access. So we have the monitoring center where we're going to look at live preview and playback. We have the event center where we're going to see the actual real-time events and real-time event statistics. Deep Explorer which is where we do all of our searches for our AI. We also got the maintenance center where it will tell us all of the uh, uh, well-being of the actual server that we're using. And then of course we've got access control for TMAC, you know, for example, and we also have vehicle entrance and exit for our AMPR technology. So now I'm going to give you a run through on the monitoring center. Okay, right. Okay, so into the monitoring center you will be able to see on your left hand side we have monitor, video wall and map. So of course we already can control those devices easily enough. I'm going to stick with monitor at the moment so you can see what I can see. So, as you can see from my sites on the left hand side, I have many devices added and all I need to do is double click or drag and drop. So there is my Hunter series. And then I also have my other Hunter series lens. And at the front I also have a 180 degree overview camera as well. Okay, so of course nice and easy to drag and drop. Now if I close these, and I brought, bring in just Hunter top lens, then because I've engaged this one single camera, if I click on playback, it immediately starts playing back the same camera that I was viewing seconds ago. As you can see, that's in fact actually jumped straight to the playback, and I can now move this sliding time bar to any point in time where we were recording previously. Okay, so of course the live view and the playback is very easy to get to. Okay, so let's just close that off and go back to live preview. Now, assuming that I did have a couple of cameras, let's say I've got the uh, Hunter there, we've got a front door lens there, and we also have, let's say, a thermal imaging. Now, let's say if in, in a video wall environment, or maybe a man-guarded solution, or close perimeter protection, then of course I don't want to actually leave the actual view. So I can actually drag in a browser here. I'm going to go into google.com. It's going to take a, well, I thought it was going to take a, a second or two, but it's in perfect speed there. So let's do our security. And as you can see, I can actually completely stay within the actual DSS Pro. And of course, I can actually navigate to a website without any issues whatsoever. Oh, looks like we also have some thermal technology being detected here. I'm going to close that for now. Right, so as you can see from the actual monitoring center, it's very, very easy to use. As some of you know, that I do in fact actually have a Hunter PTZ at my house. So of course, uh, as you can see here, this is my Hunter. And what I can do is I can access the actual PTZ features very, very easily. So we can move left and right here, no problem. We can actually zoom in and we can load up some presets. So of course, if I click on this button here, then of course, let's go off to maybe preset one for example okay good preset two excellent so see the way that the hunter series ptz is capturing all of this metadata you know we can in fact actually in a minute or so we're going to be able to do a search for two blue cars because the actual hunter series is relaying this back off to the actual recording unit and let's go back to i think it I think home position is preset 6. Perfect. Okay, so as you can see from DSS version 8 
the actual monitoring center is very, very easy to use. So let's uh, close all views here, engage on a large video matrix, and let's chuck everything else in there. Perfect, okay? Easy to use, very easy to use, okay? It's a very easy software, this. Um, we, of course, obviously have previous versions like um, PSS and the DSS version 7. This is easily the best one. It's so user-friendly in comparison. Right, I will kill these views off. Nicely done. And then let's move over to our next category, Event Center. Now, I turned on every single event of possibility. I turned on video motion detection, uh, camera disconnect, video loss, uh, intrusion detection, human detection. I turned on everything. And in this case here, this is the real time events coming through right now. As you can see, they're coming in right this second. Now we already know that we would never really actually use video motion detection because of the possibilities of many false alarms. However, though, I still want the system to know because if I went to a irregular time like, you know, 2300 hours or 0200 hours, then of course if there was a lot of video motion detection events, like lots of them, even though that I'm going to cater in a percentage for false alarms, then of course if there was a lot of them, that must mean that there's something in the field of view that is actually triggering good old fashioned video motion detection. So of course with that said, then of course we would use that to find out what happened the following morning for example, or what happened the previous night. So of course like real time events are a possibility, then I can actually do a search. So let's say, uh, let's just pick a camera, so I'm going to say video channel, and let's say, actually I'll say all, all of them. Yes, okay, that will work, right, okay then. So video channel, of course I've got all of my devices in there. And I have, wow, multiple pages. So here we go, we've got the Garden Teoc has kicked off with IVS human detection. Have we got any others? Front view overview, tripwire has been triggered. It's completely feature rich. There, there's tons of information in here. Now let's go over to the event statistics. So there we go. So at the moment today, we have on average, of oh, wow, like 4,000 different events. And of course, like a hyper pop population so let's say 1282 high incidences which means that you know possibly they are worth looking at 4470 low video motion detections we probably don't need to care about that and we also have a clear statistics of what is actually eventing out at any one time so of course at let's say one o'clock this morning we had 194 low results which must mean that they're just video motion detection However, though, at two o'clock in the morning, then of course we had some high results like human body detection or IVS for intelligent video system or smart motion detection. So of course at one o'clock in the morning, there were 16 events. That's probably I should be looking at, okay? Through the event statistics, it's so easy just to be able to look over your timeline and of course refer back to something that you need to look at. So, so easy. Right, let's move over to Deep Explore. Now, Deep Explore is the amazing one. So of course, we have our IVS, Intelligent Video System. We have SMD, Smart Motion Detection. We have Human Body Detection. We have Vehicle Detection. And then of course, we also have Face Detection, Face Recognition. All of that lovely luxuries are all now gonna come into one single search filter. So what I do here is I'm just gonna select everything just to speed things up. So I'm going to select my AMPR camera, my IVSS, my NVRI, and my TIMAC next to the training room. So I'm just going to select everything. I'm going to turn on face capture, body capture, vehicle capture, non-vehicle capture, okay, and access records for access control. Now when I click search, don't know if this will take a second or two. Okay, here we go. Right, so body captures are coming in. Okay, so I'll just click, and face detection is now populated. So, as you can see, we have many different face detections. This is coming from the Hunter PTZ. We have members of staff being tracked and determined. Perfect. Okay, down to body detection. 
Okay, so of course you can see in this one here that that's a female there. She's wearing white trousers and a black top. Let's see if we can get another one of those. There's a guy wearing blue shorts, black top and a hat. You know, that's perfect statistics. It got it white down to the finest of details. Okay. So we have lots of human bodies. Then of course we have vehicle detections. So of course, like uh, I told you that there will be many different blue cars whenever we diff um, PTZ about. So there's those blue cars that we were looking at. Then of course we have white vans. You mo might notice that the actual reg plates are also showing here. And there goes uh, a couple of cars. And of course we have a couple of vans. Now, then of course we have access control, like the TIMAC unit. So this is door one. So there is a stranger being detected. And there is a staff member detected. So of course in this case here, Eddie has been recognized, as you can see there from the name, Eddie has been recognized that he's walked past the TIMAC system and of course it knows that it's him. So of course the face recognition system is kicking into play just fine. And there's me. Okay, so it's actually picked me up just fine as well. So of course, whenever we're using this, then of course it is so, so easy. Now it, it only keeps on getting better. So if I, let's say if I took it down to something more unique. So let's say if I said, right, face capture, and I said gender, and I said all of the females for all of my technology, for example. Perfect. As you can see, there's all the ladies in the building. Okay, no problem there. Let's go back. Let's go to the personnel archive. So what I'll do is I'll do a search. Now all, all of these people, are in the system okay they are actually known people in this system so of course what I do here is I cl click on myself I guess that's only fair and take a look there now can you see that it's actually catalogued all of the cameras throughout the whole site and it's in fact actually put them into the sort order of everywhere that I've been so the last camera that it saw me was was behind desk 3 in the training room okay it's also detected me at the uh, front door and it's also picked up my car. So, like, look at that. that. That's amazing. Look, that's whenever I left this morning. So I click on the actual operation button. There we go. There's me off driving to work. There could be a couple of others. Oh, look at that one. And here we go. On the actual AMPR camera in this building, that's whenever I was arriving at work. Okay? That's just amazing capability okay so of course it knows who i am it knows whenever i left the house it knows whenever i came to the office dss pro version 8 will change absolutely everything for any application or solution that you have this is the software that you need right let's just keep on going let's keep on showing you a few things so that deep explore then so let's go to body capture then so of course obviously because we have metadata then let's go to top color, turn all of those off. Let's see, has anybody moved in the street today with a red top? Let's see. So select all of my cameras. Search. Yes, one person. This lady here walking the dog. Okay. As you can see, it jumped straight to that point in time. If I had a partial description of somebody, was there anybody in the street with a red top, then of course I only need what ask the actual software, and of course it will give me the answers. As you can see, it was pretty much instantaneous as well. Not to mention we're using Wi-Fi and a VPN connection as well. Right, let's move on to the next category. So, maintenance center. This one's a bit quicker. Now when we load the maintenance center, it's not gonna tell me the data about my computer, not this computer, it's actually about my server. Now that's regarding topology that we'll come back to in a few moments. So at the moment on my server, I'm actually using 2.7 CPU usage for this software and I'm using 60% of its RAM. The hard disk is absolutely doing nothing and I'm using 160 bit kilobits up and 35 megabits down. So I'm definitely downloading a lot of data. Now. I've got a total devices online because 27 out of 27, alarm channels 96 out of 96, and then of course I have a total count. Encoders, I have two of those, one ITC, which stands for Intelligent Traffic Camera, one ASC, which stands for Access Control, and I have one over one, okay? No problems there. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, we actually have statistics regarding the hard disk capacity and how much space remaining. I only need that page, and I'm confident everything is in good working order. Two to go, access control. 
Now, access control is a very good ability. One, because obviously you can manually control your doors. However, though, at the same time, you can also rig the device to see a full history. You will be able to see everything that is happening with your access control. If anybody walks past right now, we will get access control log at the bottom stating time, location, the person's name and ID, if they're recognized by the system, any event type, like unauthorized access, access, or I could just in fact actually go to the global parameters, click on always open, and then of course now that door is just fully open. So the mag contact, the stripe log, all of that will be released now. And of course, then I will come back to this and then close doors. Okay, no, no problem whatsoever. Access control is very feature rich for this. And of course, not only that, you can also control your time and attendance and you can also control visitor information. It's very feature rich. And then finally, vehicle entrance and exit. So if I just draw, drop this one down, drag that into there, there's my AMPR camera at the front of the building. So of course, immediately I can access raw live data. So if a vehicle drives past right now, it's gonna populate at the bottom. So maybe I might want to keep, it, keep this in a live preview, or I can click on vehicle search, and then of course, just do a search. Okay, here they come. Okay, a couple of vans here. Going, coming, a couple more vans. Oh, right, that, that explains that actually they are doing construction nearby. All right, lots of vans. Literally tons of data here. So uh, total records are, I think 97 records of vehicles coming and going. You can see all of their, there's the actual plate numbers, the Dow office, entrance uh, formation, and of course they will be, still be present because I haven't got an exit camera. There's somebody in there, Peugeot 205, um, turning up. Okay, so as you can see, it's all populating into place absolutely perfectly. So let's just recap. So monitoring center, perfect for your live preview and your playback. We have your event center, now for your motion detection, intelligent video system, and of course other live statistics. Then we have Deep Explore, so that's going to be perfect for your for your human body detection, your vehicle detection, your face detection, face recognition, your access control, your AMPR camera. That's the real one in there. So Deep Explore will answer all of those factors. Maintenance Center to find out how your server is doing. Access control for the actual TIMAC and of course obviously time and attendance and of course vehicle entrance and exit. So then that way we can deploy barrier control, maybe LED um, signal signage, so on and so forth. Okay. I think you can all agree that the actual foundation of DSS version 8 is very powerful. Click on the spanner on the left hand side. We have device, user and storage under settings event, map, personal and vehicle information. So of course, let's just take a look at that one. Personal information, so we've got staff here. Everybody is listed within the actual system, not a problem. And then of course, we also have the databases that drive that, so that's in the watch list. Okay, so we have two face recognition databases, perfect. We have access control, intercom and attendance, visitor, entrance and exit, and then of course at the bottom are all system configurations. System deployment, license, system parameters, and backup and restore, okay? Right, pretty quick uh, run through of the actual DSS Pro version eight. However though, it's just packed full of features. So of course what we'll do is we'll just keep on playing with this software, we'll keep on bringing out uh, more features. I've still got Intercom to add to my technology and I thought I had one more product, I think it's just Intercom to go actually. So after I do Intercom then that must mean that my DSS Pro version 8 is tapped into every DAO or product category that we have. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell. All the best.